My name is Julia Jenkins. I'm the president of the Minneapolis City Council, and I'm going to call to order this regular meeting for Thursday, March 23rd. This morning, we have two resolutions to present, which we will do before taking up our regular order of business. And the first resolution is a Sexual Assault Awareness Month honorary resolution. And um, we have any members in the audience to uh, accept that resolution, uh, and I think we do. I'm going to come down and read it. Also. And it is my honor to present this resolution declaring April 2023 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the city of Minneapolis. Whereas, formally, formally acknowledging Sexual Assault Awareness Month in Minneapolis each year is a necessary step towards centering and honoring victim survivors in our community and Whereas we must face the truth that sexual violence occurs in this city. And at its core, sexual violence is indisputably about power and control. And whereas sexual violence has been used as a tool of war, state violence, colonialism, white supremacy, anti-blackness, patriarchy, transphobia, and misogyny, and as a result, Minneapolis's black, indigenous, queer, disabled, and youth communities are victimized at high rates. And whereas victim survivors face an uphill battle after experiencing sexual violence and being believed is the first step. But many victim survivors also seek medical care, financial resources, justice, and emotional support. And whereas discrimination against citizenship status cultural norms, class, race, age, ability, gender, and sexuality can be a barrier to healing. And whereas every member of our community deserves a healthy and nourishing environment in which sexual violence does not thrive, and every member of our community is thereby responsible for championing consent, boldly, autonomy, accountability, and anti-racism. And whereas a growing number of community members are calling for change, we must imagine a new version of our city in which reports of sexual violence are treated with urgency and consideration. Advocacy organizations are given sufficient resources and various needs of victim survivors are constantly met. And whereas victim survivors deserve access to accountability mechanisms outside of the criminal legal system, and whereas we have a long way to go, the transformation is possible. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby declare April 2023 as Sexual, awareness, sexual Assault Awareness Month in the city of Minneapolis and invite all to stand in solidarity with victim survivors of sexual violence by wearing denim on April 26, 2023. And um, I'm going to ask Shanu to say a few words and any other members that are here today. 
Um, thank you, Council President Jenkins, Council Members, and the Mayor uh, for your leadership. Um, and I'm actually going to pass my microphone to Kenosha Devonport. She's the Executive Director of Sexual Violence Center, um, which is in Minneapolis. Thank you. I just wanted to say on the behalf of the Sexual Violence Center that we appreciate the support of the city of Minneapolis. Throughout the years, we have partnered with you all on several initiatives, most recently our Sexual Assault Kid Initiative. And so we really appreciate being in a city where they take uh, sexual assault um, as, a, as, as a priority. And so on the behalf of Sexual Violence Center, uh, we thank you and we look forward to our continued uh, partnership. And want to also thank our allied organizations for being here today, uh, the Minnesota Coalition Against Sexual Assault, Family Partnership, and the Aurora Center. So thank you. Thank you all. And um, let's get a quick photo here. Our second honorary resolution um, is honoring Jennifer White for her service and dedication to the city of Minneapolis. And before I read the resolution, I just want to please come up, Jennifer. Looks stunning in pink. Um, before I read the resolution, I just want to say few words about um, Jennifer. Uh, we met when I first started at the city of Minneapolis, and she was an uh, intern, I believe, in public works. And um, she came into our office. When, when I met, her smile just lit up the whole world. And um, I knew then that she needed to be on our team in city council. And uh, she did join our team and was a member for about seven years and has held many, many positions throughout the city. You know, we do this work because we love this city. We love our community. And we are every day trying to move our city forward. And I think that is true of every City of Minneapolis employee. And I think Jennifer exemplifies that unlike no other city employee. So, resolution honoring Jennifer White for her service and dedication to the city of Minneapolis. Whereas Jennifer White began her employment with the city of Minneapolis in 2005 as a paid intern for the Public Works Department administration where she quickly made her unique impact in the department and where shortly thereafter she began her career as a city council office staffer. And during her time with the city council, Jennifer served two revered council members, former council member Elizabeth Glidden and former council president Barb Johnson, representing both South and North Minneapolis. And whereas Jennifer served as the public safety policy advisor to Mayor Fry, and whereas Jennifer White's time and commitment to the city's legislative branch transcends three different mayoral administrations over two decades, she has contributed her expertise to dozens of honorary resolutions, like this one, <laughs> handfuls of legislative policies and community initiatives, including one Minneapolis, one Reed. Not about that. <laughs> the city's first community Reed program, paid parental leave, 
ranked choice voting, as well as a number of traumatic events, including the 35W bridge collapse in 2007, the North Minneapolis tornado in 2011, and most recently, the civil unrest following the murder of George Floyd in 2020. And whereas in October 2020, Jennifer transitioned to join the Office of Violence Prevention Team under the leadership of former director Sasha Cotton and held the position of interagency and community engagement manager, deepening her passion for community violence intervention. And whereas Jennifer White served as a member of the City County Black History Month Planning Committee for over 10 years, coordinating a month-long series of public events honoring Black History Month, and whereas Jennifer White worked alongside of her colleagues in the creation of the city's first employee resource group, serving as one of the first elected co-chairs of the Minneapolis Black Employee Network, or MBIN, and as an executive committee member of women, formerly known as the 29% group because the struggle is intersection, intersectional. And whereas her commitment to serve as a bridge between community and government has been a cornerstone of her career in public service, and whereas Jennifer White's contributions to the city of Minneapolis and to the community of hundreds of individuals she has impacted over the past 18 years as a public servant confidant and friend will forever be appreciated and we will truly miss her sunny disposition, her big smile, and all that she brings to the work. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby honor Jennifer White for her significant contributions and commitment to the city of Minneapolis and its residents and express their deep appreciation for her service and wish her well in her future endeavors as she goes on to serve Hennepin County more broadly. Thank you for everything, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Feels a little strange to be on this side of um, things, <laughs> normally organizing these and getting signatures, um, but really, really thankful. Um, it's been amazing uh, to work here. And I will just say, everybody who does this work, um, who is a public servant, we do this work because we care. Um, nobody's getting rich in any of these jobs, um, but we do it because we care about our community and we really work hard uh, to make the community better for everyone. Um, I've been honored to serve with so many people. I've made so many friendships that are going to last for a lifetime. Um, and I really thank Andrea, Council President, um, for giving me a chance, uh, taking a chance on me. I was young, fresh out of college, um, and giving me an opportunity, um, which we always have to do, make sure we're creating space um, for folks to come in. Um, and really appreciate all the work that you all do as council members and elected leaders um, and the staff, oh, the staff, oh man, amazing. Everyone is so amazing who works at the city. It's not easy, um, but we all appreciate everything that you do. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. Congratulations on your future endeavors.
Thank you. Now I will ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Councilmember Rainville. Present. Councilmember Goodman. Present. Councilmember Wansley. Present. Councilmember Johnson is absent. Councilmember Osmond. Present. Councilmember Payne. Present. Councilmember Koski. Present. Councilmember Shugtai. Present. Councilmember Chavez. Present. Councilmember Ellison. Here. Councilmember Vita. Present. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are 12 members present. Let the record reflect that we do have a quorum. Next, we have the adoption of our agenda. Colleagues, the agenda for today's meeting is before us. And I'll ask, are there any amendments to the agenda other than the honorary resolutions that were presented at the beginning of the meeting? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Uh, that carries and that agenda is adopted. The next item of business is the acceptance of minutes from our regular meeting on March 23rd and the special meeting of March 30th and the adjourned meeting held March 31st. May I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Vice, uh, Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries in those minutes have been accepted. Next, we have the referral of petitions, communications, and reports to the proper committees. May I have that motion, please? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. It carries and um, the report is adopted. I'm sorry. Um, the next order of business is reports from our standing committees, beginning with the report of the Business Inspection Housing Committee. And the report will be presented by the committee's vice chair this morning, Councilmember Osmond. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, the Business Inspection Housing and Zoning Committee brings forward 11 items. Item one is on a liquor sale on Sundays with no life entertainment to license for a steady port. Item two, authorizing the submittal of the 2023 HUD Consolidated Plan Action um, and authorizing the city officials to exclude program allegation as amended and enter agreement to receive in 2023 funding. Item four is appro approves the TIF plan for the 1301 West Lake Street project, approves the Stephen Point market rate project contribution to the 1301 West Lake Street project to fulfill the inclusionary zoning requirements. Item four approves the ratification of Mary Ellen's Histro on sale wine license for outstanding taxes owed to the state. Item five approves 11 liquor license. Item six approves 39 liquor license renewal. Item seven authorizes an increase of $75,000 to an existing CPDF loan to provision LLC. 42nd Avenue and 414 Aldrich Avenue North. Item A grants exclusive development rights to um, 2712, 2800 Penn Avenue to DT Investment LLP. Item 9 approves the local historical landmark designation to Holy Trinity Church in the Third Ward. Item 10 approves the rezoning of 2323 Emerson Avenue North 
Item, item 11 approves 1 million Great Street Gap financial loan for V3 Sports Center at 701 Plymouth Avenue North. And I'll stand for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Osmond. Are there any questions? Seeing none, clerk, please call. Oh, Councilmember Allison. So I was uh, a little slow to get myself in queue there. Um, just wanted to um, highlight that uh, uh, we have uh, some financing for the V3 Sports Center in my ward, which um, I know some of you um, uh, maybe are familiar with that project, maybe some not, but really grateful to staff and the mayor for uh, finding a way to support this project. Um, it's, you know, uh, I could go on and on about the project, but mostly it's a state of the art sports facility. We have a long legacy of folks on the north side, of kids on the north side being engaged uh, at a high level in sports, but very few sports facilities for folks to go to. And so they're figuring out how to uh, make do and how to uh, train up their, their, their athletic ability uh, in substandard. Um, uh, facilities often, and so to add this to, um, you know, uh, the very little sports infrastructure that we do have uh, is a huge thing for the north side, and just uh, grateful to staff, grateful to uh, uh, V3 and uh, and my colleagues for uh, hopefully supporting this. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Allison, and it is uh, a great day that we finally get a, a world class sports facility in North Minneapolis. Um, Seeing no further discussion, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Aye. Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and that report is adopted. Next, we have the report from our Committee of the Whole. That report will be presented by the Chair, Council Vice President Palmasano. Thank you, Madam President. We have one item being forwarded to Council this cycle. It's an agreement with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for delegated authority on federal aid projects. And I'll move this item. Council Vice President has moved that committee's report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and that report is adopted. Uh, the next report is from our Policy and Government, Government Oversight Committee. The report will be presented by the chair, Council Member Allison. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, <clears throat> the Policy and Government Oversight Committee is bringing forward 17 items that it is recommending for approval. One is a appointed position in the Finance and Property Service Department, Payroll Director. Two is gift acceptance from the National Association of County and City Health Officials of Travel and Lodging Expenses. Three is gift acceptance of the Local Public Health Association of Minnesota Executive Committee for Travel and Lodging Expenses. Four is rollover of unspent 2022 appropriations. Five is support for, uh, is a resolution uh, um, of support for Delta Airlines employees. Um, six is a public safety property use follow up analysis. Uh, seven is a procurement policies and practices. Um, uh, eight is a bid for turf establishment. Nine is a bid for park lane reconstruction project. 10 is a contract with Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District for warehouse district activation events and safety services. Uh, 11 is a contract amendment with Minneapolis uh, Bicycle Coalition uh, doing business as our streets Minneapolis for 2023 organization um, of Minneapolis Open Streets. 12 is a contract amendment for graffiti abatement services. 13 is a contract amendment for snow removal services for the special services district. Uh, 14 is a contract amendment with Messinger Construction Company, Inc. for the Minneapolis Convention Center ceiling and lighting upgrade project. 15 is a contract amendment with Park Mobile LLC for mobile payment application for on-street parking. 16 is a contract amendment for Minneapolis Convention Center snow plowing services. Uh, and 17 is a contract amendment with Vinco, Inc. for catch basin and manhole repairs. 
And with that, I'll uh, approve all of these items. Thank you, Council Member uh, Ellison. And um, are there any questions? I see Council Members Chugtai and Wansley in queue. Council Member Chugtai. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I am hoping to pull item number four uh, out for uh, further discussion. Uh, Council Member Chugtai has requested to pull item number four uh, for discussion. Uh, Council Member Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to share some brief comments on item number five, which is the support for Delta Airlines employees. Um, so right now, over 50,000 employees at Delta Airlines, um, including over 3,000 workers at MSP Airport, are attempting to unionize. Um, this would be a historic victory given that Delta has the lowest union density of any major airline. Um, so, you know, with that said, workers are organizing for higher wages, uh, more safety protections, and the voice on the job. Um, and this resolution expresses an official position of solidarity and support for those workers as they attempt to unionize. Um, it's similar to resolutions we've passed for Starbucks workers, our teachers and educators and graduate students. Um, so I'm, I'm really, um, you know, happy that Hopefully this time, uh, you know, we can get it right in terms of the workers finally being able to unionize and have those protections. Um, and yeah, with that said, I just wanted to provide some context on that. Thank you, Council Member Wansley. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Vaughn. On all items excluding item number four. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and that report uh, is adopted. Um, I will recognize Councilmember Chugtai. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I uh, pulled item number four, which is the rollover of unspent 2022 appropriations out for discussion. Um, I had a chance to uh, go back through and watch the, um, the committee uh, deliberations for, um, for the Policy and Government Oversight Committee. I see that this item was actually on the consent agenda and it wasn't discussed. Um, uh, thoroughly in committee, but you know, I'm, I'm looking at this item. I see $178 million worth of um, unspent, uh, uh, unspent uh, appropriations from 2022 that we're now rolling over, and all of it is assigned um, where it's it's going to go. It's a significant chunk of money. I understand that 68 million of these dollars are are ARPA funds, um, and we have I, until the end of next year to spend them. That makes sense. That uh, we're rolling those over as they've been allocated. Um, but there's $32 million worth of general um, fund revenue along with uh, $77 million of internal service funds that are being um, reallocated for, for this year. Um, I understand that our, our CFO isn't here right now, but I'm, I'm hoping to... Uh, one, get a sense of if this is all of the of the revenue that was unspent that's been reallocated or if there are dollars that aren't represented here that weren't spent in 2022. And then further, I'm, I'm hoping to get a sense for why, you know, this is a, a very significant amount of, of money, um, getting a sense of why the, the council didn't have a role in determining where it was going to go, um, but we are you know, voting to approve it. So um, I'm, I'm curious about whether I have uh, other council members here that have similar questions or additional ones that I may have missed, um, and then would look to the chair of POGO to determine like what what next steps could look like, whether it's sending it back to committee for further discussion, deliberation, and understanding of our financial policies, or um, if we wanna try to get our, our CFO in here today. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chug Tai. Um, Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I too had a lot of questions about this. It's a significant number. I also saw that a lot of the um, line items in there were 
active projects. And so I assume just kind of the logistics of the timeline of how those projects unfold. But I think that my eyes kind of popped out when I saw $178 million as something that just kind of passes on consent. And I just feel like we really ought to have a little bit more in-depth discussion and deliberation. At least, you know, the majority of this body has only passed one budget before. The majority of this body hasn't had to do these rollovers. I don't necessarily think it's inappropriate. Um, I just would like a little time to dig into this and at least have kind of like some conversation about what our financial policies are and at least a deeper understanding of some of those ongoing projects and what that impact is. And I'm particularly sensitive to it because uh, with the new government structure, our role as the approvers of the budget and managers of the money, I think needs to be really, really, really emphasized. And having these things just pass via consent without much deliberation feels a little bit off, at least as a first time council member. So I, I would actually suggest that could, could we do some sort of, like, I don't know what's at risk if we were to delay this a cycle, but is there an opportunity for us to do some sort of work session, whether it's in a special budget meeting that we could do as my kind of like a work session or some other venue to at least kind of go through some of these items line by line? Is that an opportunity? Uh, council member, I'm, I'm not, um, absolutely positive. I do think that it is um, possible to refer this back to committee and have that discussion in committee. Um, if that is a choice, then that would have to be in the form of a motion, I believe. I'd, I'd like to make a motion to refer this back to committee for that further, deeper discussion. Uh, so, a council member... Motion. Payne has moved to refer item number four back to committee. Um, and it has a proper second. And so we'll now hear from council member Ellison on the new, on the amendment. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I appreciate this discussion. Yeah, we didn't have discussion about this in committee. I think uh, sort of took it for granted that these things are, you know, need to be paid for and uh, could be very wrong about that. But I, uh, I would like to know before I, because I'm open to supporting Councilmember Payne's motion, uh, but I would like to know what the what the risk level would be. You know, would would programs be halted? Are there things that need to be paid for? within the next two weeks that couldn't be paid for. Uh, if things, if, if, if sort of none of those things are a factor here, I'm perfectly comfortable referring this back to committee. Um, if those are things that we could potentially run up against, that would certainly affect my uh, ability to uh, uh, vote on this motion. And so I think uh, not to call the uh, budget director up to the podium uh, before she's even had a chance to sit down, but um, <laughs> I got, maybe you could re-ask my question since uh, you, you may not have heard it. Uh, Please. Mm -hmm. So the, we're on item number four, which is about the rollover uh, uh, funding uh, from 2022 appropriations into this year. Um, it's a relatively large number. There's been some discussion so far about wanting to get, I think, some kind of presentation. We didn't discuss the item at committee. It didn't get pulled for discussion. Right. Uh, but council members do have questions. Um, I'm wondering... Um, if uh, there's a, and so there's now a motion from Councilmember Payne to refer this back to committee for discussion. Um, uh, and I guess I'm wondering, you know, what's the, what's the risk of doing that? Is it basically low risk? We have our discussion, it gets delayed two weeks, no harm, no foul, or, um, you know, it, would, would a delay sort of essentially put uh, departments in a position where they can't pay for things that they need to pay for within the next two weeks? Just trying to get a sense of uh, what our risk is here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, council members. Um, so, thank you. <laughs> I think uh, for bills that need to be paid from the amounts that are being rolled over, departments can use their current year general fund budget. So that, that will require some switching around and some inconvenience for departments to pay invoices that are for previous years bills, which is the large, largest part of rollover is that just kind of mismatch between the calendar year. Um, 
it's not insurmountable, but it will be inconvenient for departments. Thank you, uh, Director Kluwer. Mm -hmm. um, Council Vice President uh, Palmasano. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm actually gonna yield to Council Member Goodman first, but I do have a suggestion as to how we might proceed. Thank you, Ms. Kruver. Perhaps you could, um, in, in, in the interest of transparency, explain what the rollover is. Sure. I, I think there may be, be a misunderstanding of the rollover being a change in our budget direction, oh. and it's just simply money that, so for example, if we gave an affordable housing project a million dollars, and they were not able to close on the project, that money hasn't been spent, so it's rolled back over to CPED. So it's not changing our direction it's just simply the timing of which yes. um, bills get paid and by delaying it we would be asking staff to do a bunch more work for us to review it I don't have any objection with reviewing anything we've approved all these things already um, maybe a, a, a study session on budgeting and rollover would make sense but I'm not sure it makes sense to hold this over so that they have to do a bunch of accounting changes yeah. in order to, to get the rollover past and perhaps Ms. Kruver could better explain it than I did with my CPED mm -hmm. example. Yes, uh, council members, thank you for the question and for giving me a little sense of the flavor of the conversation before I walked in. So rollover is really meant for uh, appropriations for business that started in the last fiscal year, but the bills are coming in in this fiscal year. So rather than taking money out of their budget for the planned year, they are using the money that they had budgeted in the previous year, rolling that forward to pay the bill that didn't make it in before uh, December 31st. Um, there are some, uh, like in CPED, there are many multi-year projects, so I think a huge chunk of CPED's rollover is all um, commercial property development fund dollars. So those are not changing direction, those are still being you know, appropriated for the purpose which they were originally appropriated, they're just being rolled over because those take many years to roll out and be expended. So the rollover process isn't a change in direction, it's not moving appropriations, it's simply rolling them forward, either because the, the invoice or the PO came after the end of the year, or in CPED's case particularly, the, we have big multi-year projects. We also have, I will say, we do have a lot of documentation around each individual rollover and I'm happy to answer questions offline or, or connect you to anybody else for any follow-up questions uh, if that helps move it along. Thank you again, Director. Um, and Council Vice President Palmasano. Thank you, thank you to my colleague for that clear example and oversight. I, I share my colleague's concern about us having an oversight role that is especially important. It feels like this was supposed, this perhaps warranted discussion at committee, um, if nothing else, due to the very large dollar figure that it is. Um, that said, this has been a standard process, and as we're hearing here, it really depends on the project what the risk is to, to delay this or to move forward. My understanding is that most of these projects weren't able to be completed. They've all started, there's not something wrong here, they're just, they weren't able to be completed. And my other understanding is this is largely due to staffing here at the city right now. Um, we did do a presentation, I wanna mention, on the city's financial policies at budget committee in, in January, I believe it was January 9th of this year, and that was deliberate from Council Member Koski as budget chair wanting to make sure that we all understood what our city's financial policies were and how we would follow them. Um, we have approved all of these items, and to me it feels a little disruptive or unnecessary. It will look, um, it will look hard to track in our general, for people tracking our general public spending for this to stop, be paid from, from this year's general funds and then go back to using rollover dollars. Um, timely payment is important to all of us on different kinds of projects. I would suggest, and now I see the chair in queue, so would yield to the chair, I would suggest that we move ahead for approval today, but also have a discussion on rollover money at a future POGO um, session as a discussion. And I, you have my support if there is something that we should be changing after that. Uh, there's always the opportunity to go back and redo things that we move forward on today. And I'll yield to the chair. Yeah, I, uh, 
Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. I would, I would. That's a direction that I would be uh, in favor of. Uh, I. I think there are a lot of things that we discuss that are worth sort of taking another look at and taking our time with. Um, I, this, I think we risk creating busy work for staff and we know that this is, um, they're busy enough. Uh, so, uh, so yes, uh, but it is an important discussion. The item probably should have been pulled for discussion uh, at committee as well. So I, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I think today, I do think we should proceed forward. Um, uh, uh, and would love to sort of plan either some kind of presentation or study session for the future so that we can really understand what's in front of us. Uh, I think just as an item on paper, it can look like, uh, you know, a, a large dollar figure just went simply unspent, but that's not the case here. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, so I think I agree with the direction that um, Vice President Palmasano has uh, proposed. Great. Uh, thank you, Council Member. And last in queue on this item, the motion to refer to committee is Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. This might be a question for our clerk. Uh, I, I basically agree with the conversation that unfolded here. So should I just make, with, withdraw my motion? Is that kind of the right? Certainly the procedure? motion belongs to council, but we could certainly withdraw that if that was the preference of the body and vote on the original motion that was offered by the chair of the committee for approval. Is that your will, yeah. Council Member Payne? Yes, Madam President. Uh, Council Member Payne has um, rescinded the motion to refer back to committee, and we have in queue Council Member Chavez. Uh, thank you, Council President Jenkins. I think for me, moving forward, a learning lesson for everyone, and I hope that we can do this moving forward, is that when these financial policies or these um, that's over $100 million, and <laughs> that's a lot of money. There should be presentations, there should be dialogue, there should be discussions. This, is, this shouldn't just be a, a check mark that the council gets to do. There should be oversight, there should be conversations, and we should be able to have dialogue about where this money is going, how it's being used effectively, if this is actually what we wanna be uh, diverting our dollars into, uh, and we get to ask these questions. So I would just ask that moving forward, whenever these come before the council, that we should have dialogue a presentation I think would be the best method going through what the money's being used for because I think it would be more more opportunity for the council to, to deliberate. So I just want to make that comment and I'll be supporting that motion. Thank you, Councilmember Chavez. I do want to just clarify, however, we're not diverting funds. We are simply rolling over funds to continue the projects that have already been um, voted on by this body. So agree that it is a great idea for us to understand and discuss those items, but to be clear, we are not diverting $168 million. Um, the, those funds will be continuously spent on the projects that were currently approved. Um, and so, Mr. Clerk, Madam President, I was also just going to add to the comment you said that uh, as we continue to learn, you know, we're talking about legislative reform, it feels that in the past, for many, many years, these things have been brought forward sort of pro forma because the council does adopt financial policies that strictly regulate what monies can be rolled over under what conditions and for what purpose. And so those financial policies the council adopts every year dictate this process as well. So I did send an email to the full council following up with a link to the study session at the budget committee that was done in January this year, so you can review the uh, presentation made by the budget uh, department at that point on rollover. Uh, also sent you a link to the city's existing or adopted financial policies that have the policies specifically on use of rollovers and suggest that perhaps a further process improvement is typically after the budget is adopted, the budget committee stops meeting and it feels like perhaps this is the tail end of the budget process and we should plan in the future years to have the budget committee at least have another meeting into the beginning of the next financial year to address its work on the rollover piece. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, and great suggestion. Next in queue, are you still in queue from the first time, Councilmember Ellison, or? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you can, I'm happy to remove myself from queue. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Wansley. 
Thank you, Madam President. Um, I wanted to get in originally on the motion before it was rescinded, but just wanted to offer uh, support for the uh, suggestion that my co-chair uh, Ellison provided. I'm more than happy. I know um, Council Member Chavez, you're also on POGO, like we can touch base to make sure um, we can schedule a presentation. I'm sorry, can I, one mic, thank you. Um, to schedule a presentation also with some of the folks who, you know, raise those concerns to make sure whatever presentation we bring forward is encompassing some of the concerns and questions that you might have. So absolutely want to share it, you know, look forward to working with council member uh, Ellison to get that presentation. And we'll make sure to extend the invitation for all the council members to, you know, join us at that POGO meeting. So we can have that robust discussion if needed. Thank you. And seeing no further discussion, clerk, please call the roll on item number four of the policy and government oversight committee report. Council member Rainville. Aye. Council member Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are twelve ayes. That carries and that that item carries and now the report is uh, fully adopted. Finally we have the report from our Public Health and Safety Committee, which will be presented by the Chair, Council Member Vita. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Health and Safety Committee is bringing forward four items. Item one is the passage of an ordinance amending the noise violation exemption related to sounds associated with religious worship. Item two is authorizing a revenue contract with the University of Minnesota for bomb detection services at Huntington Bank Stadium. Item three is authorizing a revenue contract with the Downtown Improvement District for support of the Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District Summer Police and Police Reserve Program. And item four is accepting a donation from the Minnesota State Association of Narcotics Investigators for travel expenses to the 2023 MSANI can -Am Conference. I'll move for approval of these items. Thank you, Council Member Vitao. And Council Member Vitao um, has moved this committee's report. Are there any questions? Council Member Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I wanted to speak on item number one. Please. Uh, thank you. Baruch et Adonai Hamvorach. That in Judaism is our call to prayer. And a call to prayer in Judaism and Islam stem from the same fundamental idea that we are children of Abraham, descendants of common matriarchs and patriarchs. Both Judaism and Islam have different interpretations of our core teachings, but there are very common core values and guidelines and principles that are held by both religions. Islam is a continuation of Abraham's monotheistic faith and our faith believes that peaceful coexistence comes from honoring each other and God. I am thrilled that my colleagues have brought forward this uh, ordinance change today because what I learn at my temple, Israel, is that the importance of interfaith dialogue and understanding transcends everything else. It transcends politics, agreements, and disagreements because we can come together around a common good. I stand today with my fellow people of faith in Christian, Jewish, Muslim, and other traditions to say that we are a community that cares about religious freedom. I know that all members of the council are proud of what these three council members were brave enough to bring forward as an uh, observant Jew. I stand with you and I thank you for bringing this forward. So, Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to pull item three for a separate vote and discussion. Uh, Council Member Payne has requested to pull item number three for discussion. And so, next in queue is Council Member Osmond. I'm sorry, Rain Bill. My apologies. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, First of all, thanks to my 
uh, colleagues, my Muslim colleagues, for bringing this forth. This is very important. Councilmember Goodman, you're very eloquent. Thank you so much for your kind words. And to our, our brothers in faith, thank you for being here today, and I'm so happy to vote for this. I'm a member of Our Lady of Lourdes, a, a Catholic church, but constantly our faith leaders teach us the importance of respecting other faiths and how important all faith is. So I, I will be gladly voting today, and I want to especially acknowledge members of your community at Dar al Qam. Uh, they have taught me so much about your faith and are great friends, and I, I do whatever I can to help them. So thank you for coming today, and you can count on my vote. Next in queue is Councilmember Asman. Oh, thank you, Madam President. I want to take time to really appreciate the time we live in. Um, uh, we live in a place that we can freely practice our religion. And um, this was something that uh, put a smile, money, faith, uh, Muslim community in the in, in, in city of Minneapolis. This has started a um, long time ago, um, and many years ago. Some of the leaders you see today have started that conversation, and we got nothing but support from the leadership of the city of Minneapolis, including the mayor. And to hear the words of, of my colleagues uh, really kind of even empowers me and, and makes me happier to hear that. Uh, we appreciate that, and we are uh, Minneapolis residents are um, really grateful that we live in a country and a state that we can freely practice. And as we talk to the residents, uh, to hear the Adan, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's something that I grew up listening, but my children haven't. And now uh, visiting, visiting see the Riverside Mosque and hearing that is nothing but a joy. At the same time, we, we also know that we live in a, um, a city with multiple faiths and, um, uh, and, and we have nothing but uh, respect everyone that live in the city of Minneapolis. So thank you so much for, for your support, and I do especially want to thank uh, Councilmember Chick Tai and Councilmember Allison for their hard work in making this in a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Asman. Next in queue is Councilmember Ellison. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, just wanted to echo uh, what Councilmember Osmond said. And, you know, uh, for years, uh, as this issue would come up, we were asking uh, folks, especially during the month of Ramadan, which we're, which we're still in uh, now, um, to, to, to basically take this up as a one-off, right? To, to get special permits and to get all this other, to, you know, to jump through a lot of hoops in order to uh, practice our faith. And, uh, you know, uh, Councilmember Chiktai, you know, uh, I remember pulled me aside and said, does it make sense that we're asking folks to sort of jump through all these hoops year after year to get these approvals and all this other stuff? And so I think I just want to thank Councilmember Osmond for really uh, starting this conversation and moving us forward. I want to thank Councilmember Chuktai for making sure that we could get to a point where now this is law and uh, in the city of Minneapolis. And obviously, I want to thank the community who's in the, in the audience today uh, and uh, for, for, for pushing us um, for a long time. I, I believe it was just... Uh, Council, former council member Warsami sort of holding it down here as a Muslim on the council. And now there's three of us. Uh, and we've got, a, you know, in a body of 13, that's, that's, a, real, that's a real caucus, right? And so uh, really thankful for, uh, to, to, to have uh, not only the support of uh, my Muslim colleagues, but uh, obviously council member Goodman of the entire council on this issue. So thank you and thank you for being here. Thank you, council member Ellison. Council member Chukdai. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I, um, it's been, uh, it's been, we've been working on this issue now for a really long time. Um, and I, um, as we're taking our final vote on this, I, I want to like recenter in, in the people who've helped truly shepherd this issue along for a number of years. So, um, few of them sitting in the audience here today, but particularly our, our, um, our advocacy, um, and and legal representation organization um, in in Minnesota, uh, the Council on Islamic uh, or American Islamic Relations Care Minnesota. That's just really really led on this issue. Um, 
in, in Minneapolis. And thank you for your hard work and your persistence and your advocacy on, on this issue. Um, it is, um, it is really important for us at, at the city to approach all issues from, uh, from a lens of, um, ensuring equal access for all people and that's what we've really done here this is uh this is an item that benefits people of all faiths um and though that is that is important for us um i don't want to lose sight of of the work that you in particular have done on, on this issue thank you thank you council member chartai um See no further discussion. I will ask the clerk to call a roll on this committee's report. Um, Sands item number three, which has been pulled for discussion. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That item carries, and um, congratulations to our Muslim community. And I will recognize Councilmember Payne for discussion on item number three. Thank you, Madam President. Um, since the beginning of this term, and actually since my very first agenda setting meeting as Vice Chair of Public Health and Safety, I've had so many questions about our buyback program. Um, over the last year, uh, we've had presentation, uh, presentations on it. I've made requests for further policy development around it so that we could have more controls. Uh, just this last week, we had an update to my legislative directive that was very thorough. Uh, and I've had very productive conversations with uh, Director McPherson around what types of policy changes might be suggestive based on some of that analysis that, analysis that was presented last week. And so I'm, I'm very uh, enthusiastically excited about what that future of that might, like look, might look like. And just to summarize for anybody who wasn't in public health and safety, there's, there's really like four categories of some of this um, voluntary overtime. It's federal grants, typically from the Department of Justice. It's uh, you know, bomb detection from some of our major stadiums. And then it's these private buyback contracts with various organizations and then off-duty work. And I think it's these private contracts and off-duty work that we need to do further uh, policy development around. There's some barriers to what controls the city can put on the off-duty work in particular. But for the buyback, I think there's a real opportunity for us to have much more intention and control around the, those voluntary hours. And I'm very hopeful for what we can do around that. I would like to see in the future a reduction of off-duty work. And buybacks might actually be the opportunity to have much more intentionality around those voluntary overtime hours outside of um, off-duty. Until we have those controls in place, though, um, I still am not supporting these um, independent buyback contracts. I've evolved in terms of that deeper understanding of those DOJ grant dollars, the, the need for bomb detection at our major venues, but it's really these independent uh, contracts that I think that we should have much more policy process and control around. And so I won't be supporting uh, this item today, but I am very hopeful for what types of controls we can put together in the future, especially as we have, you know, we've welcomed uh, Chief O'Hara uh, on board. We've got more leadership that's really kind of focusing on, on these hours. We have our new settlement agreement. We've got a structure to really start changing how um, we're doing policing, and, and I'm looking forward to putting that structure in place. But until it's in place, I can't be, support uh, item three today. Thank you, Council Member. Um, seeing no further discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on item number three. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Wansley. Nay. Council Member Osmond. Aye. Council Member Payne. Nay. 
Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Nay. Councilmember Chavez. Nope. Councilmember Allison. No. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are seven ayes and five nays. That item carries and that um, committee report is adopted. Um, next we have our introduction and referral calendar. Pursuant to notice, council members Ellison and Vita will be introducing and giving first reading to the subject matter of an ordinance amending the housing maintenance code to amend provisions related to mold growth, water damage surfaces, and rain water drainage, which will be referred to the Business Inspections, Housing, and Zoning Committee in the next cycle. Are there any questions from council members on that introduction? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries in. The ordinance is referred to the biz committee in the next cycle. Uh, the next order of business is resolutions. We have two honorary resolutions that were read at the beginning of the meeting. Are there any further comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adopt these resolutions. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Uh, that carries and um, the last item is we have a request for a closed session today. And before we move to closed session, I will take up any announcements first. Do any council members have announcements to share this morning? Council Member Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. First, I just want to say thank you to my colleagues for the support for the uh, Delta worker or airline worker uh, resolution. Um, I also wanted to extend an invitation. Um, my office is, go is going to send you all an email with this information too, but uh, Delta workers are hosting a rally this Saturday, uh, April 15th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's going to be at the St. Paul Regional Labor Federation. Um, there's going to be uh, national speakers who've been on the front lines with organizing alongside the 55,000 uh, Delta workers to try to make this happen. So I just wanted to extend the invitation for my colleagues to also stand in active solidarity as you did today with this resolution. Um, and again, we'll be following up after this meeting with more of that logistical information. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Kotsky. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to invite all my council members and anybody else in the public. We won't have another council member or council meeting prior to Earth Day, which is coming up on April 22nd. I know that Pearl Park near my house has an event at 930, but there's also a, through the Great River Coalition has a 5K run uh, in uh, Minneapolis that starts earlier at 8 a.m. So if I, I asked my other colleagues to please let us know about the other activities because I think they're happening all day long throughout uh, that Saturday too. So thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember and Councilmember Payne. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the weather is changing. Spring is upon us, and that means Art of World is coming up. Uh, that's going to be May 19th through May 21st. It's one of the nation's largest open studio crawls, and there's going to be over 800 artists and galleries participating. 40 sites, it's a, it's a big deal uh, in Ward 1, and I just want to extend an invitation because it's always a huge celebration. Great. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Payne. And I put myself in queue just to announce that today um, there is a job fair happening at the St. Anthony Community Center. Uh, please um, inform your constituents who are seeking employment to head over to the Sabantony Community Center. Um, a number of railroads are there and actually hiring on the spot. Um, 
And with that, we have completed the regular items on our agenda. We'll now consider a request for a closed session, which is for two litigation matters as listed on the agenda. Before I move to close the meeting, I'll recognize the city attorney to provide the legal basis for the requested closed session. Council uh, President Jenkins, council members, the next items on the agenda are the cases of Pope versus Chauvin et al. and Code versus Chauvin et al. These are cases that are in active litigation in federal court. Your lawyers wish to discuss with the council litigation strategy and or settlement possibilities. Accordingly, under the Minnesota Open Meeting Law, Minnesota Statute Section 13D.05, Subdivision 3B, the council may, upon a proper motion, close the meeting for the purposes of attorney-client communication. In considering the motion, the council should weigh the right of the public to know what its government is doing against the need of the city to preserve the confidentiality of its discussions with its attorneys. Thank you, um, Madam City Attorney. And with that, I move that our public meeting be closed as authorized under the provisions of the open meeting law, specifically Minnesota Statutes Section 13D.05, Subdivision 3B, for the purpose of discussing the litigation matters of Pope v. Chauvin et al. and Cole v. Chauvin et al. May I have a second to that motion? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Vice President Paul Masano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and we will now close the public portion of our meeting and convene in closed session. For the viewing public, I'll note that the broadcast of this meeting will continue and the council will reconvene in public after we've concluded the closed session. Thank you.
The time is now 12.59, and the City Council has reconvened in open session following our closed session. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of the Council Member Rainville. Present. Council Member Goodman. Present. Council Member Wansley is absent. Council Member Johnson is absent. Council Member Osman. Present. Council Member Payne. Present. Council Member Koski. Present. Council Member Shugtai. Present. Council Member Chavez. Present. Council Member Ellison. Here. Council Member Vita. Present. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are 11 members present. Uh, let the record reflect that we do have a quorum. And um, I will ask, are there any motions to be presented? And I call on Council Member Ellison. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I've got the motion here, and I'll, I'll read it. Um, Council Member Ellison moves to approve the settlement of all claims, known or unknown, related to the claims brought in Zoya Code versus Chauvin et al., uh, in the amount of uh, $1.375 million, according to the terms of the settlement agreement of the parties, payable to her attorneys, Robbins Kaplan, LLC, um, uh, from, from fund slash org 06940-1500-100-602013-145400 and authorities the Minneapolis City uh, Attorney's Office to execute any documents necessary for settlement. Um, and I'll stand for any questions. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none. Clear. I second the motion. Oh. I will second it. And we now have a motion and proper second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Vice President Palmasano. Aye. Council President Jenkins. Aye. There are 11 ayes. That carries and that motion uh, is adopted. And next we have a motion by Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. I move that all claims against the city of Minneapolis and any of its named or unnamed current or former employees, including claims for attorney's fees and costs asserted in the matter of John Christopher Pope Jr. versus Derek Chauvin et al. Civil case number 22-1434 be settled in the amount of $7.5 million. That amount will be payable in the following way. One, $5.8 million to Robbins Kaplan LLP, uh, trust account FBO John C. Pope Jr., and two, $1.5 million to New York Life Insurance Company, and three, $196,000 to Prudential uh, Assigned Settlement Services Corporation. The city attorney's office is authorized to execute all documents necessary to effectuate this settlement. Thank you, Councilmember Payne. Is there a second? Second. second. We have a motion and proper second. Is there any discussion? See none. Clerk, oh, Councilmember Payne. Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to um, reflect on the videos that we just watched because they're going to be publicized, I think, very shortly. And it's just a reminder of what we went through in 2020. And we have spent a good chunk of time this year really debating the sensitivity of these types of incidents and how we should be moving as an institution and making sure that these types of incidents don't continue to occur. And I think that, you know, one of the things that we do when we're trying to address our traumas is I think our bodies protect us sometimes in making us forget what those feelings felt like 
because if those feelings are at the top of your mind at all times, you just can't function. And I think watching these videos again brings those feelings all the way back up to the surface again. And I think we need to be really tender with ourselves as those feelings flow through us. And we need to allow the rage of those feelings to help inform and shape how we move forward together as a body. We cannot forget what happened to Derek Chauvin, I'm sorry, to George Floyd, what Derek Chauvin did to George Floyd, and how these cases are a reminder that he got to exist that way as part of our institution. And it's actually not a Derek Chauvin problem, it's an institution problem. And if we don't let the outrage of what we witnessed today shape our policy-making decisions, we will continue to have events like this. And so I want this to be a reminder, not just for myself, but for us as a body, that there is a lot of intentionality that we need to bring to our decision-making around these issues. And I know that it can be divisive and sensitive, but we really need to address this. And I'm not glad to bring this motion forward, but perhaps this motion can help us bring some closure to this era and is a stark reminder of the work that we have lying ahead. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Payne, Councilmember Payne. And uh, with that, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shabtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vito. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 11 ayes. That carries and um, those settlements will be um, adopted. And with that, colleagues, we have completed the business for today. With nothing further to come before this body and without objection, this meeting is adjourned. on others. In downtown, uptown, and other parts of town, you'll find metered space. Public hearing, and if the applicant is here and would like to come forward, you can um, do so now. Good evening. Uh, Damaris Hollingsworth, the architect for the project.